Hey there fellow wine lovers! Join me for another wine grape harvest where we stomp grapes, drink some delicious Sangiovese and Sangria, make paella, and enjoy all the friends and sunshine. My name is Kay, this is Kay's Tiny House Adventures where I am building my very own tiny house. My build site just happens to also be a vineyard because luck befalls some of us. <laughs> to get updates, don't forget to subscribe and like this video so that you get notifications when I post new videos. For the second harvest of the year, we harvested Sangiovese and Grenache. Sangiovese is always the largest crop of the year. I had the privilege of visiting Italy back in 2018, I think it was, uh, for my cousin's wedding. And he is fun history of my family. My mom, who's Japanese, she moved to America. Her sister moved to England. So my cousin is English, Japanese. Well, I am American, Japanese. And he met an Italian lady. That's why they got married in Italy. We visited the Tuscany area and did all these wine tours. And what is Tuscany famous for? Chianti. And what is Chianti made of? Sangiovese. So again, it's just very serendipitous. It was so awesome to compare Doug and Debbie's setup with like centuries old wineries in the hearts of Tuscany. And you may wonder, how does ours compare? I will be humble, but also honest, that the Texas terroir has been kind to us. Another timeless tradition is the Sangiovese grape stomp. Doug sets up a whole feet cleaning process. We set aside a couple hundred pounds of our Sangiovese grapes to crush with our very own feet. The sensation is weird to say the least. It kind of feels like you're crushing bugs. It's all in between your toes and it's all goopy and squishy. Needless to say, it's a fun time for kids and adults alike. As you can see here, Mimi is doing it right. You gotta have a wine glass while you're stomping. How's it going, Phil? It's going great. Look at that. Wow. Biggest Tariga harvest ever. Is that all of the Tariga? Uh, about to be. They're coming in. What do we use Tariga for? Port. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks, Preston. <laughs> hey, Uncle Harold. Hey, how are you? of the year, we harvested the rest of the varietals. Tempranillo, Tariga, Mouvedra, and a final row of Grenache that wasn't ready the previous week. So if you've been keeping track, here's the full list of Doug and Debbie's varietals. We've got Grenache, Sangiovese, Mouvedra, Tariga, Tempranillo, Viognier, Syrah, Graciano, Roussan, Albarino, and Malbec. Now three of these make one of my favorite blends, the GSM. It is Grenache, Syrah, and Mouvedra. Here is a bottle of one of my favorite blends, and as you can see, they call it the estate blend, but it is Grenache, Syrah, and Mouvedra. And this year, we have enough to make a blend for 2023. I think the last one was back in 2020, so this is a pretty 
awesome event. And yes, we also bottle and label all the wines, so you'll definitely get to see that process as it comes up. Super curious, do you have a favorite GSM or Chianti? Please comment it in below because I would love to know. One of my favorite things to do is buy some wines from the store and then compare similar blends to the ones we make at Doug and Debbie's. It's always a fun time, it's always a blast. Honestly, it's always a win-win situation. So back to harvest. When harvesting grapes, the goal is to clean out all of the fruit, even the stuff we know we don't want to include in the wine, like those dried up crunchy grapes and the unripened small green grapes. The unwanted stuff, we just drop to the ground. The stuff we want to keep, or if we're unsure and want the sorters to make a decision, we put them in the buckets. Sometimes the grapes grow in really funky places and you gotta finagle them the best you can. Here's our friend Travis giving a really good demonstration. Safety tip, always look before you clip. If you can't see your fingers, you're doing it wrong. This video is not sponsored by Home Depot, but it should be. The strongest of the group carry the full buckets up the hill to be sorted. large sorting station where the bulk of the grapes get sorted and then we also have the smaller stations for two to three people that are spread out. I mentioned this in the last video but these smaller stations are awesome. They were a product out of COVID so to help people sort in smaller groups and far away from each other. During sorting we're looking to keep the best of the grapes. Each cluster is examined by a person. We wanna make sure to get rid of those hard crispy grapes, the small and ripened green grapes, any moldy grapes, and any leaves, debris, and bugs. Sometimes the grapes like look funky. So what we do then is what I call the smell check. And if they smell like vinegary or like sour or just like unpleasant, then we dump them. But if they don't, they smell good or they don't smell like anything, then they're good to keep. Once a bucket has been sorted, it gets weighed. Doug and Reed were in charge of crushing the grapes. This gets rid of a majority of the stems. Once the grapes are crushed, Doug adds K-Meta. The K-Meta kills any wild bacteria or yeast before it starts fermenting. The tubs are then carried to the house where Doug and Debbie tend to them every day and make sure that they're doing their wine grape magic. Harvest also meant an extra special lunch, paella and sangria. 
Doug made the sangria with fresh fruits and his very own Grenache Rosé. It was the most refreshing and perfect beverage for a hot and productive day. Debbie had the brilliant idea to get these clear pouches that we could wear around our necks. I coined them the adult Capri Suns. I can sort and sip at the same time. Game changer. Joe was in charge of the paella, which was its own like concurrent event. Joe and Debbie spent the entire morning prepping the meal. It had every meat imaginable. It had chicken, duck, chorizo, shrimp, scallops, clams, squid, calamari, like it was it was everything. It's August 12th, 2023, and we're starting the final harvest here at Norma Creek Vineyard. And today we're gonna to be making paella. All right, we're preparing to cook the chicken thighs and the duck. We got an entire duck, thanks to Ryan and Pratikshi. now away from the wind we're heating the stock this is shrimp stock vegetable stock and chicken stock and that's going to go in to, to cook the rice uh, eventually but we want to start with it hot so it doesn't slow everything down uh, and then the other thing we're going to do is we're going to toast the saffron that we put in the envelope and then we ran over it and crushed it inside the envelope and now we're going to toast it and then we're going to steep it in this hot water and that's what we're left with you smell that yeah Alright, so hold this so I don't spill too much. So why are you doing it in the water? We're steeping it to make it more available to blend evenly in the rice. So the next step is we're adding cubed dry cured Spanish chorizo. We're just gonna brown this for a little bit and then move on to the veggies. And here is the finished duck and chicken. So now we've got our base veggies in, the so green beans and yellow onion and red bell pepper and artichoke and uh, tomato paste. And we're gonna be browning that and making the nice, rich veggie base. Right, so we've browned the uh, vegetables. They're looking great. Uh, and now we've reduced the heat. We're going to add garlic and paprika. And then we're going to bring the heat back up we're gonna put the rice in, and we're gonna toast the rice a little bit, and then we're gonna add the preheated broth. So we've got the tomatoes added and the scallion whites, they're reduced, and now we're adding the rice, and we're gonna coat it in this oily vegetable mixture. kids also love the adventure of Doug and Debbie's property. Ren and Tyson discovered an old Jeep. Tyson loved taco. Hi, 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 
And taco tolerated Tyson. <laughs> amazing time. Friends, sunshine, good food and wine. Cheers to the harvest of 2023. See y'all next time. Bye!